Hi, welcome back to another lesson. Today we're taking a look at chapter 12, which is excretion. Excretory products are formed by metabolic reactions which occur inside our bodies. These produce energy as well as waste products. You can think of metabolic reactions being similar to making food. You have the products and this is what you use and this is waste which you need to eliminate. Metabolic reactions result in the production of energy and waste products. Now the process of respiration in animals results in glucose being combined with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide, water and the energy that the animals need. The animals uh, can use the water and their energy but carbon dioxide is a waste product that can be eliminated by our breathing. In plants, glucose is broken down to carbon dioxide, water and energy. Again, the plant uses the energy. Um, the carbon dioxide, which is our waste product, um, gets used during the day by the plant again in the process of photosynthesis as the plant takes up the carbon dioxide. But however, at night photosynthesis does not occur and the carbon dioxide can't be used. Then it becomes a waste product and the plant needs to eliminate it. There are two types of waste products. Products produced by metabolic reactions and products that are not produced by metabolic reactions. So, there are two types of waste products. Waste produced by metabolic reactions and waste that are not involved in metabolic reactions. So, our excretory waste are products which are produced by metabolic reactions. For example, carbon dioxide in the process of respiration. Uh, these waste products are made intracellularly. On the other side, we have products that are not involved in metabolic reactions. These waste products get eliminated via egestion. These are substances that can't be digested. For example, cellulose that just passes through our alimentary canal. So, what is nitrogenous waste? So, how do mammals get rid of nitrogenous waste? Well, we take in protein in our diet and then the excess is excreted as nitrogenous waste. Thus, nitrogenous waste is a product of our protein intake. In mammals, nitrogenous waste gets converted to this product called urea, which is non-toxic. This is how it works. We have our protein which we take in through our diet. Then the protein gets broken down in the stomach by these digestive enzymes. They break the protein down to amino acids. Our amino acids travel uh, into our bloodstream and they get absorbed in the villi of the ileum, which is in the small intestine. The amino acids then travel in the bloodstream through to our hepatic portal vein, which is the vein going into the liver. Once in the liver, some of the amino acids gets used and it goes to our blood vessels which carry it to the rest of the body where amino acids are used for example in protein synthesis to build muscle. The excess uh, amino acids however are broken down by enzymes. These enzymes actually split our amino acids uh, to release energy. The energy is stored in the body as glycogen for later use. The rest, what remains, is a nitrogen containing part which is then converted to our product urea through the process of deamination. Thus, you can break the name down deaminoation to remember the name. Urea is then dissolved in blood plasma and it is excreted. It goes to the kidneys and the kidneys excrete the urea in urine. A small amount is also excreted via our sweat glands. Table 12.1 shows all the liver functions. 
you have to go study the table in depth you have to know the liver functions get to know what your liver does for your body it's pretty amazing so if we take a look at the human excretory system we take a look at the kidneys now the kidneys lie retroperitoneally which is just a fancy word for the location you have two kidneys and each kidney has three parts we have our renal cortex which is this outside layer this outside pink layer that you see here then we've got our renal medulla this is this section this next section our other major section is our renal pelvis which is this section over here blood goes into our kidneys to be filtered it goes into our this renal lobe in our, at our renal lobe the blood is carried by the archaeate artery um, up to our glomerulus so once our blood gets to our nephron it's carried by the afferent arterial into our renal corpuscule here the salts and excess water as well as urea get filtered they get pushed out into this glomerular capsule out of the red um, arterioles the rest of the blood goes back uh, in goes to the efferent arterial out of the capsule um, but the substances that were filtered out travel in to this descending loop this is what a renal corpuscle would look like so blood goes in and because there's such a high pressure inside this system small molecules are pushed out of the blood and they travel into this nephron loop each renal capsule has this cup like shape and has this blood supply where small molecules are squeezed through tiny holes due to the high pressure reabsorption starts to take place here at the nephron loop water gets reabsorbed um, into our vasculature as we do not want to lose all our water the body still needs water we just want to excrete the excess so all the water is filtered out but we need to take some of that water back because our body needs some of the water thus it is reabsorbed because of this reabsorption the solutes become a little bit more concentrated and as they go along the nephron loop at the ascending limb um, sodium and chlorine are reabsorbed as well as we do not want to excrete all our salts this is our proximal convoluted tubule and this is our distal convoluted tubule final readjustment of water reabsorption take place in the distal convoluted tubule what's left goes to our collecting duct and travels to the ureters as urine urine travels from the kidneys down to the bladder along the ureters the ureters uh, fill the bladder with urine which is highly elastic and can hold large volumes of urine when the sphincter muscle relaxes urine uh, gets released through the urethra urine is formed as blood goes to the kidneys there the blood is filtered lastly a quick note on dialysis dialysis occurs or is a process that patients get put on if their kidneys do not function optimally um, patients who have kidney failure for example have to go for dialysis because their kidneys can't filter out the toxic waste products and excrete them um, thus this to these toxins will actually build up inside the body and they can cause serious damage and death if these patients do not get put on dialysis so dialysis is basically a process where the patient is put on a machine and the machine does the work of the kidney the machine filters out the toxins and uh, re the blood is re uh, introduced into the person's body after it's cleaned all right let's take a look at some past papers question eight the body loses water all the time 
One of the ways in which water is lost is by sweating. State two other ways in which water is lost from the body. Well, we know water is lost through urination, which is excretion, and we know water is also lost through feces, which is egestion. So, a person is regularly connected to a machine that removes wastes and excess salt and water from their blood. Which organs function does the machine carry out? Well, that's very easy. We know that the kidney um, removes waste, excess salt and water from blood. Which substances remains in the blood as it passes through the kidney? Well, water, urea and salts are all small enough to be filtered out uh, of the blood. Protein molecules, however, are not small enough. They're too big to pass through the tiny pores and thus they remain in the blood. That wraps up today's lesson. Good luck with the studying and go and get those good marks.